What is up YouTube? Today I'm coming back at you with another DVD slash Blu-ray pickups video. Um, I have quite a bit of things to show you guys. I have six, no, eight different things. No six. I can count. Six. Six different things to show you guys. Uh, only one of those is on DVD and that's mainly just because they don't have a Blu-ray version. Uh, everything else is on Blu-ray. I have a steel book and I have some other interesting things to show you. So let's just get right into it. I hope you guys enjoy this video. We'll go DVD stuff first and then we'll do Blu-rays. Um, probably do the steel book first and then the rest of them. So, all right. So the first thing I picked up is a DVD and um, I'm really, really excited to get this. I'm getting really into this franchise. This is a TV show. And this is an older TV show. Uh, I always wanted to watch it. I, cut, I caught a couple episodes on TV when it was actually airing uh, back in the day. But uh, I never actually got to sit and watch through the whole thing. So that's what I'm doing now. Uh, there's a lot of seasons to go through for this franchise. So I picked up Stargate SG-1 Season 2. I've watched two episodes of this season so far. Finished Season 1. I actually... At first, I really was kind of like disappointed in season one, but then like halfway through, it got a little bit more interesting. Some of the episodes sounded a little, some of the episodes were a little bit better and I don't know, like the character development was a lot better. And I feel like they started getting a little bit more serious about it because I feel like the first couple episodes of SG-1 are really, really cheesy. Sort of like Buffy season one, how it's like super cheesy, but not as good, I thought. But season... Uh, season 2 has shown to be a lot better already, so I'm really, really excited to finish watching Season 2 and see what I think about that. So yeah, got Stargate SG-1 Season 2. Uh, I'll show you some of the discs. The disc art is literally just repacked from the original box set versions. So it's just the original box set version discs in a small, thin case, and that's why I like it. It has these smaller cases. All right, so next we'll go through my Blu-ray stuff. Uh, I'll do the Steelbook first, and then we'll go normal movies and then my TV stuff, so. All right, so the first thing I have is a Steelbook, and I bought this Steelbook on a whim. I had no idea they were coming out with a Steelbook, and I am honestly super surprised they even made this on Steelbook. I know it's not like a super amazing franchise. I think it's a, the first, I think the first two movies are really fun, but I don't know, I just was super surprised that they made this as a steelbook, and that is The Mummy Ultimate Collection Steelbook. Who knew they were going to make an, the original Mummy series into a steelbook? Because that's like, I know it wasn't like super, super popular, but they were successful movies. But it's just not something you would see, like think to see on steelbook, but whatever. Um, I really, really like this steelbook. This steelbook is one of the coolest ones I think I own, which is just super surprising. Such a, like, surprise steelbook has one of the coolest steelbooks, I think. Uh, this is actually, like, supposed to be styled like the Book of the Dead from the movie itself, which I think is awesome. Uh, you have your, your key emblem right here. Uh, it just says Mummy Ultimate Collection, and basically what this includes is the first three Mummy movies and the first Scorpion King movie. I know there's a couple other Scorpion King movies, like four of them, I think, but uh, the first one is the only one that comes in here, so. It comes kind of packed like this. Uh, now, this is the biggest downside to this steelbook, I think. Uh, they have the discs stacked on top of each other. Um, this, well, another thing I forgot to mention, it comes with an exclusive bonus disc. I think it's a Blu-ray, it might be a DVD. That's a DVD. It comes with an exclusive bonus DVD with um, a bunch of extra special features on it, which is always really nice to have. I love having extra special features. It's got some back artwork, but I don't want to take out all the discs because they're all stacked on top of each other and just a real pain in the butt to get in and out. Um, and that's really my biggest down downside to this steelbook is just the um, the the setup of the of the discs themselves, but I mean, there's not really any other way they could have done it, to be completely honest, since there are like five different discs in here. So I'm happy with what I got. I'm super, ah, oh, I just think it's such a cool looking steelbook. And this was the last one left, so it was awesome. All right, so now we'll move on to the normal movies. All right, so this first movie I picked up just because it's a movie that I loved when I was a kid. It's a it's a comedy movie. It's not hilarious or anything. It's not like an amazing comedy movie. It has its moments, but um, 
I definitely wanted to pick this up just because it's a nostalgia purchase. I used to watch this movie all the time on VHS back when I was a kid. So I picked this one up, and that is Heavyweights. This is a Ben Stiller uh, comedy movie by Disney, which is a weird combination looking back at it now. Um, it's basically about uh, a fat camp and basically how this crazy businessman tries to take over and turn it from something fun into something terrible. And um, it's it's a really... I, I It's a movie that I had to have just because it's something I watched all the time when I was a kid. It's not a super, like, amazing, uh, like, artwork type thing. It's just... Uh, yeah, you can keep that code if you want. I don't really use the Disney ones. Um, it's just a, you know, blue disc. It's kind of sucky. It has a bunch of special features on the back, which is awesome. So, nice to have that. Uh, but yeah, cool movie to have. Something from my childhood. Almost dropped it, but I didn't. Alright, so the, the next movie I picked up is a, it was another impulse buy. I picked this one up because I'm, I really like picking up movies that aren't, like, super well-known, but, like, look really good, sort of like, I don't know, It Follows and stuff like that. The smaller budget movies, just because I feel like there's a lot more happening in smaller budget movies rather than the big blockbusters, a lot more innovation and whatnot. And this one comes from South Korea, and um, I was really interested to get this because I, I have three different South Korean movies already, and they've all been pretty good. Um, the... Yeah, they've all been pretty good, actually. Uh, I had one weird horror movie that was probably the weakest, but it was still good. And this is another one to add to that, and that is called Age of Shadows. Uh, I wanted to pick this one up because, uh, number one, it said it was, a, it was the Academy Award winner for Best Foreign Film in 2016, so I was pretty intrigued by that. It's also by uh, Kim Ji-woon, and uh, he did... He directed one of the movies I already have. I think it's called um, The Commitment. And I love that movie. So I wanted to pick this one up because I, I know he's a good director. And um, I, I just wanted to pick this one up. And basically this is a 1920s thriller set in Korea. Because there was no North or South Korea at the time. It was just Korea. And it takes place during the 1920s. During the occupation of Japan. So basically this is Korea under Japanese control and the independence fighters from Korea trying to regain their independence. And it's a really, really cool uh, movie. I watched it already, and uh, I thought it was really, really good. I don't think it was as good as I was anticipating, which is unfortunate. I think Commitment was a better movie than this one. I think they're both very good, and I, I definitely enjoyed and really liked this movie. I just don't think it was as good as I was hoping for being an Academy Award winner and everything. I think that there was probably better candidates. I'm not 100% sure. Haven't checked any of the other foreign film candidates out, but I feel like there's probably a better uh, option when uh, in the running. But maybe I'm wrong. Maybe this was the best one in 2016. But it's a pretty good one. I really enjoy this movie. The set design, uh, the costumes, and the dialogue are all really, really well done. Um, but just, I don't know. I don't know, I felt it was, it was pretty predictable, is, I think was my biggest thing. For a thriller, you don't really want predictability, so that's why I think I was a little disappointed. But it was a really well done movie, regardless. Alright, so the next thing I picked up is something that I've been wanting to get for a while, just never jumped on it, and that is a TV, sh uh, TV show. And this is one of my favorite TV shows, so I eventually wanted to pick it up, I just haven't. But they had a deal at Best Buy. So if you don't have this already, go to Best Buy and get this because they don't have it on sale right now for a limited time for $10 on Blu-ray. So I got season one of Supernatural. I like Supernatural a lot. Um, the first... Okay, so I'm completely caught up with Supernatural, so it doesn't really matter. Uh, if you've not seen Supernatural already, I'll try to keep spoilers out of this. But the first five seasons are the best, in my opinion. I, I absolutely love the first five seasons, the pacing's right, the story's great, everything about the first five seasons is just like amazing. Um, after Eric Kripke left, I think it fell apart a little bit uh, for a while, like the first, I'd say about up until season eight, it was kind of like unsteady footing. Season six, I think was good though. Season six, I think gets a lot of crap with the, the, the Leviathan arc and everything, 
But I actually liked the Leviathan arc because it kept true to the same feel of the first five seasons, but after that it really kind of like fell apart. Around season 9 I think it started to pick back up, and the past two seasons, seasons 12 and 13, have been really good, like back up to the quality of the first five seasons. So I'm really like looking to get the Blu-rays now again, because there was a while I was kind of debating it, but I'm definitely looking to get all the Blu-rays now. Um, season 13, oh, the season finale just happened a couple weeks ago, I'm still like in shock about that finale and everything, but um, yeah. Season 1, I'm really happy to have it on Blu-ray. I'm kind of curious, because I know that Netflix removed the soundtrack, the original soundtrack with all the 80s songs. Um, I'm kind of curious to what, as whether to, or not the Blu-rays did that. I know the DVDs did not, but the DVDs came out much earlier than the Blu-rays. I'm hoping that the 80s soundtrack is still in the Blu-rays, and I'm hoping it is, just because it's published by uh, Warner Brothers. So maybe it is, maybe it isn't, but um, I have to get to Season 2 to check check out for sure just because there's a lot more 80s songs in the season two um stuff that they probably wouldn't have the rights to anymore if that's the case so um yeah but season one's really good um it's a little slow i think season two is where it really picks up so definitely worth checking out if you're a fan of like uh buffy or angel or anything like that and the last thing i picked up is an anime tv show uh this is only part one of this series and uh, I picked this one up, I've already seen it, I've already seen this whole series, um, because my girlfriend decided that she wanted to watch uh, Gundam with me. So we moved on, we've already finished uh, the first original Gundam, and she liked it, but it wasn't like her favorite thing ever. But uh, she wanted to continue on the timeline, so I picked up uh, part one of Gundam Zeta. I really like Gundam Zeta, there's a huge jump in quality from the original Gundam in this. Uh, Camille, not my favorite main character. My girlfriend seems to like Camille a lot more than um, Amaro, but uh, the mech design is where it really shines through. The mechs in this show really, really improve in quality. Uh, the story itself, I think, also is a lot more interesting, uh, a lot more uh, fleshed out, I think. I think the original Gundam had a lot more filler episodes than Zeta, so I'm excited for that. I'm excited for her to see her reactions. Uh, I Definitely one of the better Gundam series, especially in the Universal Century. Um, but I'm really more excited to get to Double Zeta, because that one's my favorite in the Universal Century. Uh, made by Tomino, at least. Uh, a lot of people don't like Double Zeta, but I actually really, really like it. So, um, yeah, excited to get that. This has the first 25 episodes. The next 25 episodes are in part two. So that's everything that I picked up. I hope you guys enjoyed. Uh, if you have any suggestions for movies or TV shows for me to watch, let me know in the comment box below. I check out every single suggestion and pretty much watch every single suggestion that you guys recommend. Um, just let me know what you guys think of my like this series and if you want to see more. And um, if you guys have seen these uh, movies or TV shows, let me know what your guys' opinions are on them because I love to talk about movies and stuff. So. That's everything I have. I hope you guys enjoy, and I'll see you guys next time. Peace.